Hi, my name is Mitch Mitchell, and I'm smiling already because I actually already did almost this entire video, only I didn't have it set on video. So <laughs> That's just so goofy, but you know what? That's life. Anyway, today, I'm actually going to reminisce about something that happened in my life that seems to have affected uh, different parts of my life as it applies to my memory. From 1963 until 1966, I lived in Tokyo, Japan. My dad was in the service, and he worked at Takahashi Air Base, and we lived in a place called Green Park. And it was interesting, and that's the best I can say right now, and you'll know why as I get further into it. Um, but in essence, it was an apartment complex of sorts. There were six or seven three-story buildings that we all lived in, the, the dependents along with, you know, dad and, you know, the other soldiers who had families. I don't know where the non um, or the people who didn't have families, I have no idea because they didn't live in apartments. Um, so I remember that. I remember that it was attached to this gigantic building where everything was self-contained. In essence, there was a church in there, there was a grocery store, there was a movie theater in there, there was an ice cream joint that was in there, um, there was a pool place, there were all kind of offices, like mom worked for special services, she even got, a, got an award for that, for working there. So, you know, everything though was self-contained. Uh, preschool was self-contained in there. The only thing that wasn't self-contained was when it was time to go to kindergarten, first grade, that was right off the base, and the reason that was right off the base is so uh, Japanese kids could come to it. But it was a mess. Anyway, my story begins one day, and I can't tell you whether I was five or six. I really can't tell you. And in between each one of the apartment buildings, there were these white generator shacks. I know what was there now, but back then we just called them little white houses because that's what we thought they were because <laughs> we were kids. We didn't know. And they were basically taller than us, but we were kids, so we knew how to climb up on top of them if we needed to. Some were higher than others, but still, you could get up on them. And this one particular day, I was out there with a bunch of kids, and there was one kid named Timothy, who was pushing kids off of the shack. You know, this is a stupid kid thing, and he was just pushing kids off. Yeah, kids would scream, and they would jump off. So at one point, I'm looking at something else, not paying any attention, and next thing you know, I'm going down. And there was a metal manhole cover there. And I remember going toward it. I remember opening my eyes, and some lady is coming to me. And there's no kids around. And I didn't know who she was. I don't know if she saw me go down or anything. She might have looked over and thought there was a dead kid laying on the ground for all I know. And so she's talking to me, and I have no idea what she's saying. I just, I've got nothing. And she walks me back to the main building, and I don't know where we went. I have no clue. I don't know if she walked me to see a doctor. I don't know if she took me to her apartment. I have no recollection of any of that. What I have recollection of is that at some point, when her attention was diverted elsewhere, I basically walked away. Walked back to where I lived, walked into the apartment, and didn't think anything of it. Didn't even really remember that incident at that time. And the next morning, uh, Dad came to me to take me to the butterfly cage. In Japan, back in the 60s, I don't know if they still do that, do it now, but back then, one of the things that you did was you caught butterflies. You had all these different color cages, you had all these different color um, nets, and you would go out, you would catch butterflies, and you'd put them in the cage, and then you'd take them in the house, and you'd feed them grass and leaves, because who knew what you fed uh, butterflies? We didn't have internet back then, and at that time, I'd never been to a library, so there was no researching it. So anyhow, he had taken me to the cage, and my butterflies had died. Now, this was a common thing. You know, we didn't know what we were doing with butterflies, so they would die. You would take them outside. You'd empty. you go get more butterflies. But on this particular day, I screamed, and I screamed, and I screamed. And Dad took the cage and took it out and emptied it, and I never 
caught another butterfly. As a matter of fact, from that day, I've been scared of bugs. I just own up to it. I'm scared of bugs. I don't like bugs. I don't like anything. So everyone else thinks butterflies are cute. I don't. <laughs> I just don't. People who think uh, ladybugs are cute. No. No. They're all bugs. They're all creepy. I don't like any of them. Scared of all of them. I will go to great lengths to keep them out of the house. And if they get in the house, <coughs> I will go to great lengths to kill them. I, I just will. Uh, and it takes a lot of effort for me to do it. I have to put on a whole lot of layers of stuff. Or get my can of Raid and just saturate the heck out of those things. We now have a contract with Terminex to come in uh, once a month and spray the entire house. <laughs> that's how bad it is. Now, that's that part. Here's the other part. I remember the name Timothy, but I don't remember what that kid looked like. I don't know if I knew any of those other kids who were there. I don't remember very much of my time in Japan. I was there three years from uh, basically before I turned four up until before I turned seven. So a little more than three years. I don't remember much of it at all. There's snippets. I remember here and there things that must have stood out for some reason, but I don't remember much of it. I lived in, in Fort Worth, Texas. I was born in Fort Worth, Texas. So I was there until I was three years old. And I remember basically only a couple of things there. Now, of course, I was younger, so maybe you're not supposed to remember things. But that's it. I remember a couple of things from Texas. I remember a few things from Japan. And then we moved to the United States. And there's things I remember, but I've always had trouble with names from that point on. Always had trouble with names. And... There's a lot of things that will come to me in snippets, but I don't remember full details of a lot of things. For instance, I knew every phone number I ever heard until I was 27 years old. I remembered every phone number I had ever heard. Not seen, but heard. If someone told me a phone number, I'd never forgotten it until I was 27 years old. But names? Mm -mm. I don't remember my high school graduation. <laughs> don't remember it at all. The only thing I remember from that day is seeing my very first lava lamp and being entranced by it. I don't remember a thing. I don't know if I was with anyone. I remember nothing. I don't remember my college graduation. The only thing I remembered from the day I graduated college was that I spent the night with my girlfriend uh, who was doing some work up there and we woke to a sunrise and it was the very first sunrise out of four years of college that I ever saw. And it was amazing. And I said, wow, look what I've been missing. <laughs> but I don't remember it. And I think that it's one of those kind of things where the brain must protect you from certain things. But maybe it goes into another mode where it blocks a lot of stuff. I remember every single time that someone has wronged me. <laughs> if you're on my never forgive list, I remember it. I remember all of that stuff. If someone has irked me a little bit, I remember every single word that you said. I remember all that stuff. I don't know why, but I do. Um, so, you know, it's it's funny thing with memory. But I, I've had this conversation with my wife saying, do you think that maybe because I had this little trauma thing here that it's affected my memory? She said, it almost had to because people remember you know, maybe you don't remember tons of stuff from before you were three years old, but she said, you know, you flew across the world twice, you know, once going somewhere, once coming back. No recollection of it. Uh, I had adventures. I mean, I remember being on Mount Fuji. I remember the ride up because it was one of those single lane roads as it kind of went around the mountain and you could see over the side of it where it was, you know, this large drop and it was scary. I remember part of that, and I remember being at, if there had been sand, you'd call it a beach, where there were uh, water coming up to the rocks, and there were these gigantic goldfish, and you, you, we fed them popcorn. I remember that, but I don't remember a lot of it. I don't remember going back down. I remember the typhoon. <laughs> I certainly remember the big typhoon, but I don't remember the earthquakes. Man, according to mom, we had a bunch of earthquakes. I just remember snatches of it. I used to speak Japanese, and I don't ever remember speaking Japanese after that anymore. Of course, we moved to the States, and there was no one to talk to, but I don't, I, I lost it all. I, I just don't know. 
I don't remember almost anything from school. I don't ever remember being in a single class. I remember once talking to some Japanese kids because, like I said, families would send their kids to the school, but they didn't speak English. I spoke English and Japanese, so I used to talk to the Japanese kids, but I don't remember any of the conversations. I really don't remember any of it. Um, so I don't remember school. I don't remember a surprise birthday party that I had. <laughs> I don't remember any of it, but I do remember getting my first bike. But I don't know if it was given to me at a party or given to me another time. But I remember a bike. And I remember the guy trying to drown me. <laughs> trying to teach me how to swim. Stupid moron. You push kids off of a diving board. You dive in. You save them. You give them a badge saying they had s swimming training. Please. Really? I remember that. But that was kind of traumatic. <laughs> so I, you know? I remember leaving a group of kids that were supposed to be going to some event downtown Tokyo, walking into a building, getting on an elevator, and ending up in this Japanese couple's apartment. They must have been rich. And I had to have scared the heck out of them. And then when I spoke Japanese, they had to freak them out even more. But I remember sitting and eating with them. But I don't remember us talking about anything. We, we probably had to, but I don't remember it. And I remember eventually being back in the bus and having someone show up frantic because I'd gone missing. I remember once going to the Tokyo Zoo. But the only thing I remember is mom keeping a major eye on me and not letting me do anything. I don't remember graduating uh, from kindergarten. I don't remember who was supposed to be my best friend there, this kid named Keith. I've seen pictures of Keith. Mom said that was your best friend. You guys did everything together. No recollection whatsoever. So it's interesting. So I don't remember names, but I do remember faces. So I remember the faces of kids who I went to school with uh, in second grade, third grade, through fourth grade. Because I saw some of those people years, years later, and I knew exactly who they were. And just a couple of times I remembered names. Most of them was like, wait, okay, we know each other. Did you go whatever? Bam, and there it was. So at least I remember faces, even if I don't remember names. But... It's just, you know, a little thing that happened in my life that I don't tell people all that often because, you know, how does that kind of story come up? But I thought I would share that. It's just a little thing in my life. And that's it. I just wanted to share that, show that I do have a human side. Okay, you probably knew that anyway. But still, I just decided I was going to tell that story. Now it's down on video. I may share it one day with some other folks. So anyhow, that's me. That's my story. That's what I live with. I hope you all have had a wonderful day. I hope you didn't get overly bored by this story. And if you've lived in other places, you know what? Let me know. If you lived in Tokyo, let me know the experience. Let me know if you've lived there, you know, more sooner or better sooner or sooner or more recent, that's it, than I did. Let me know if any of that stuff has changed. I'd really like to know. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful day.